Uh, my name is Mike. I'm from Hybradar. I'm brand new to the community. I've been watching a lot of you. Actually, I didn't want to say watching. I've been following a lot of you on Twitter, so I, I know that you guys are a really uh, tight-knit community. Uh, a lot of your friends and, and even family. And uh, you guys do a lot of cool stuff. Like A lot of you are innovators. I know you have the, the hub holster. And um, I know you guys like to play around a lot, too. I know in the summer, you guys were playing Pokemon Go a whole bunch. So. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to be part of it now as well. Uh, to give you some background on, on, my, uh, on me, I actually started in graphic design. So uh, I worked in-house at an IT company. They did stuff like uh, web filters, firewalls, uh, as well as access points. So by building the websites, by adding the access points, I got to be uh, more familiar with uh, the technology. And it was a, I wouldn't say smooth transition, but a lot of the guys wanted me to start doing predictive planning. And after doing the first predictive plan that was 20 floors, I could see why they wanted me to start doing it for them. Uh, it was intricate, tracing out all the different uh, wall types, uh, placing the APs. Um, so uh, again, I could see why they wanted me to start doing it for them. Um, after that, they got me to uh, go on site with them. It was important for me to see exactly the difference between uh, a more live scenario as opposed to the, just me looking at their floor plan on a screen. So when I went on site with them, um, I got to see firsthand exactly what they have to go through. On top of planning for Wi-Fi, there's other things you have to keep in mind, like uh, the cable runs, what type of ceilings uh, they are, whether they're drop tile or concrete, uh, even the, the wall types and all that stuff too. So uh, from there, I started doing uh, shadowing them on site surveys. And the first time I went on site with them was at a school, and they were using stuff like this. So they had uh, a bulky battery on a, on, a, on a seat with the tennis balls on the bottom. I've seen them ask to borrow the AV uh, carts to put all their equipment on top of it. Uh, I've actually even seen one of these, which is the rollers from the gym, and they put a painter pole in it. So when we were on site, um, there were a lot of complications with that. Um, cables were every, everywhere. Um, a lot of the time we had to go during the day, so students would get in the way, they'd trip over this stuff. Um, there was a lot of equipment to bring on site. A lot of it might, would go uh, stolen. So it just looked very unprofessional. Needless to say, that one time that I went on site at the school, they did not get that job uh, because it looked unprofessional. So that kind of sparked uh, my imagination. I thought, how can I make this better? So the first thing they did was they purchased a kit that's already out there. I won't say the name, but essentially what I did was I took that kit and I got rid of what I think didn't need to be in it, which was the base. So I made my first prototype, which was I took their pole, uh, their case, and uh, I drilled a lot of holes in this, which didn't make the guys happy after they spent the money to buy it. But uh, I rigged up the first prototype, which is, uh, which is this one here. So they brought it on site a few times. Um, generally speaking, you're not really supposed to have a lead acid battery enclosed inside a case. So we had to think of uh, a better way to do this. But um, that's where the second version comes in. So. This, this guy I like to call Jabba, and uh, much like Jabba the Hutt, he's very big. Uh, he's also very powerful. We um, worked on getting these batteries custom rigged. Uh, each battery could run. We, were, uh, we didn't uh, do a PO injector on this one yet, but uh, we were running DC power for about uh, 40 hours each battery. Uh, the idea was to have two batteries in it, um, have the, the pull stock come out right from the middle, and uh, all the custom cabling. So. Um, we put this one into a, like a version one prototype. We never went further because uh, by this time we were speaking with a lot of engineers outside of our own company. Um, we became a technology partner of Aerohive very on, uh, early on. There's no affiliation aside from the, the Hive, and I know we've changed the logo since then, but um, they really helped us narrow down exactly what they needed out of a kit. And what they wanted was something lightweight, portable, uh, that they could bring on site that made them look professional, which is where I started uh, from the very beginning anyway. So that was really great to hear. Um, and that's where you have uh, what I like to call R2, which is uh, the small, compact, uh, full featured uh, kit that, that we put together. So uh, another important thing was to have this be carry on TSA friendly, which it is. It's small enough, it's lightweight, lightweight enough to be brought onto the plane, carry on. and um, we tried to make something that was all in one. So whether you've been doing surveys for forever or you're just starting out, 
we wanted to include uh, things that you may need uh, on site. So I'll do, not everyone's going to be able to see unfortunately, so I'll just put the screen up here, but we included um, a multi-tool that was uh, TSA friendly, so there's no knives or anything like that, that's one on the far top left. Uh, laser distance measure, goes up to 60 meters, an LED flashlight, uh, you can also charge your devices, um, and everything collapses into the case itself. Uh, I'm going to do a quick demo right now, I have the kit here with me. Um, also included is the battery. So we actually got the battery to, to fit inside the case. Uh, DC power, we've, we've tested up to uh, 21 hours. And uh, I know a lot of access points are getting rid of DC, so we integrated a PoE injector that can do PoE and PoE Plus, and that will do um, seven to nine hours, respectively. Um, through Twitter and innovation, we did see the Wi-Fi stand, so now we're bundling the Wi-Fi stand with our kit. But we also do have our own integrated um, uh, articulating mount, and essentially the idea behind it was that um, it would uh, be able to go in wall mount deployment as well as ceiling deployment, so we still do include that. We just found uh, a lot of guys just needed the standard uh, ceiling mount, so that's why we did that one. So the way this works is I've just, uh, I'll see if I can turn this around for most of you, but I've just powered up the battery. Uh, I've plugged in the special cables that we have with it. And right here on the, that you'll see on the screen there, there's a dip switch. We can choose DC or PoE, PoE Plus. So for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do DC quickly. So I'll flick the switch, close up the case, pull the case up. One thing I forgot, sorry, was it does fit an access point in it. Uh, right now I'm just using an old Arrowhive 121, but there is enough room down here where you uh, can fit most of your access points. So once again, the idea was to keep everything uh, all in one. So just unscrew the top here. Attach the Wi-Fi stand. So there's a compression cap in here that keeps it uh, tight. About like that. AP onto the Wi-Fi stand. If I can get it going. There we go. And then once again, we include all the cables too. So these have been uh, nylon wrapped. This one is the DC cable. All the, all the connections on it as well, go to the next slide, are waterproof. So uh, they'll be protected when you're outside or doing outdoor surveys or indoor surveys even. So I'll just plug this in. And then, fingers crossed, we should see the AP light up, which it does, awesome. So this will go nine feet, um, and will collapse to 22 inches. So when you're on site and you're going uh, room to room, it's super simple. You can basically just drop this down afterwards. Go just two notches, and you can roll it around with you like this, room to room. And if you're going upstairs, it's only 20 pounds, so you can even hold it with one hand if you want to. Um, for the last minute that I have here, I wanted to give more back to the community, obviously, and, and being new, I was hoping that I could uh, try and impress most of you guys, but uh, essentially we were getting a lot of requests in to do surveys. We don't do surveys, we just make the hardware. So I figured, what's the best way to do, uh, you know, instead of just throwing these out, what, what can we do? What most of you signed up for was to win the kit, but what I'm gonna explain what you did really sign up for was the engineer locator. And if you don't want anybody to contact you, that's fine. Uh, Keith's been on it for a while. We don't spam you, we don't send anything other than leads from potential customers. So instead of just throwing those leads out, we wanted to, if, they, if someone contacts you in your area and they need a site survey done, um, we'll just send the lead directly to you guys and you guys can get in contact and then hopefully go on site and do the survey for them. And um, we're doing a bit more app development. The last thing I wanted to quickly show you was uh, we're working on a project planner. So essentially what, what I saw when these guys were going on site, they were using their notepads, uh, taking pictures with their phones, uh, if there were certain obstructions or ceiling types that they want to take pictures of, there was no, um, there's no harmony between it. So we're developing a project planner. 
what you can do is uh, set up projects and um, upload floor plans, and you can annotate on the floor plan whether it's a, a handwritten note, a voice note, uh, you can upload a picture, and that way when you're home and you're going over the project, um, you can be reminded of, of things that you need to see there. So, uh, We're also going to be doing um, scheduling, to-do lists, revenue expenses if you have to go uh, drive around and stuff, all that will be calculated within here, and then hopefully uh, invoice directly from, from the app itself. And uh, everything's going to be cloud app integrated, so you can use your Google Drive or your, uh, your OneDrive. Uh, we won't see any of the information that you keep up there. Once you log in, you can, it'll just uh, sync with that stuff. So, Thank you. All right. Oh, when it, while it, we, we, have, we have a question. Do you want to? Oh, okay. Um, Where do you guys get the carbon fiber pull from? Yeah, that one was tough. Um, no. No, we, ha we actually spent a lot of time looking around for a carbon fiber pull. Uh, and, a lot of the, and a lot of stuff that was coming back, a lot of the samples, especially from China, I'll be honest, we went to China to, to see a lot of it. Everything here, is, by the way, is, uh, is Canada and the U.S. is manufacturing Canada as well. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, we spoke to a manufacturer that had to customize uh, a pole for us uh, so that we could get it inside with the compression cap. It, that, that is extremely stiff, too. Yeah, I was we wanted to make sure how stiff it was. Yeah, we want. Thanks. That's what. Said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been watching The Office too much. I almost did it. I'm I'm new to The Office. I just almost did it. Um, yeah, a lot of the polls that we were getting originally were like uh, they were just they were folding over too much. So yeah. And for the giveaway. Yeah, Keith, do you want to pull it out? So these are only from people who have signed up for the locator. We want to make sure that someone who's going to use it gets the kit. Ready? I want to sign up. Are you guys uh, planning on doing any type of like the Work. company that shall not be named any larger uh, stature poles? Um, is that something? Who, where, where did that come from, by the way? Look at the oh. big box. Hey, um, a larger pole that goes higher than nine feet? Yeah. Yeah. If there's interest, that's one thing I want to come here and see from you guys. If there's interest, we can definitely do it. Um, I've already spoken to them about getting up to 13 to 15 feet. It's pricey. It's like an extra 300 bucks for the middle part of the pole. Um, the kit already itself is pretty pricey. To, to be completely transparent with you guys, we're a very small team, startup. Uh, this was launched in July. I've been doing the R&D for two years. Um, so if there's interest, we'll definitely do it. I might even bring back Java if that's something of interest to you guys to do the larger kit. Um, you never have the chargeable batteries if, if those are in there. So, Great, thanks. Yeah. And the winner is? Jason Hill. Yeah. Oh, Tell them about the licenses. Yeah. Oh, also, Keith, do you mind just quickly one more thing? Yeah. Um, also, we've been, yeah, you can come up and, yeah. Um, we've also been uh, working with uh, NetSpot to get a branded version of their, uh, of their site survey software. So if anybody is a Mac user, I have uh, 20 Pro licenses with me. Just find me at the back afterwards, and uh, the first 20 to come can get a free Pro version of uh, NetSpot site survey software. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks.